Welcome to this update of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 situation in Thailand for February 25th, 2020. Lots been happening around the world, so let's get right into it. We'll look at how testing methods might affect outcomes in the results. We'll consider the possibility that climate and season may play a role in the spread of the virus, and we'll look at the economic impact of the outbreak, which might be even more significant than the health fallout. So let's look at the numbers in Thailand. The Ministry of Public Health reports daily statistics, including the total number of people that they've put under investigation. These PUIs are people that have presented to hospital with symptoms consistent with COVID-19, such as fever, cough, or pneumonia. The majority of these people are going to be people with differential diagnoses, such as influenza. In other words, most PUIs are not positive for COVID-19. We know this from earlier reporting where approximately 20% of PUIs tested positive in the first three weeks of the outbreak in Thailand. What we're looking at here is cumulative totals. So in orange, we see that since early January, nearly uh, 1,600 people have met the criteria to be a person under investigation. There's been a sharp rise in PUIs in the past week with over 100 people being added daily. On the 16th, we had about 800 persons under investigation. Now we have nearly 1,600 here on the 24th. This has been a result of an increased effort to identify PUIs and screen across broader areas of Thailand. Previously, only patients with travel history to China and a small subset of provinces were being screened, while now around eight high-risk provinces are being screened and travelers with a history to countries including Singapore, South Korea, and Japan are now added to the list. Looking at the current people in hospital, we see that over 400 people under investigation are currently hospitalized for the condition. What's been surprising is that despite the increased screening, no new cases have been identified for about a week. Thailand had officially 35 confirmed cases since February 17. However, just today, uh, around 1 o'clock, two more cases were announced, bringing that total now to 37. So we're looking here at the blue line plotted on the axis on the right, which is a one-tenth scale of persons under investigation. So it had been a week without any new cases reported, and generally this would be considered good news. However, it can be interpreted one of two ways, and neither really is all that desirable. One way to interpret this is that a large number of people are being screened, but the disease is not being found. And this would be inefficient. It's not ideal to test hundreds of people to identify one case. This interpretation also assumes two things. First, it assumes that all the PUIs have been tested. However, as I've shown in my first video, the test results in the first three to four weeks of the outbreak here in Thailand were very slow. Thailand was only able to complete about five to ten analyses per day, far less than the 100 PUIs currently being identified each day. To run hundreds of analyses every day is a logistic challenge, as we've seen in China. The increased caseload on laboratories can cause pressure on the labs that can lead to inaccurate results. The second thing it assumes is that the tests are reliable. Several tests have been developed using different techniques that use PCR technology, and each have differing levels of sensitivity and specificity. An article in Nature Biotechnology highlights this point. It points out that PCR test is highly sensitive, that is, it can correctly identify people truly sick with COVID-19, if used correctly. However, false negatives, they say, can be a significant problem if the lab is operating under pressure. The amount of viral load that can be detected depends on the where in the life cycle of the virus it's being tested, as well as which clinical specimen has been collected. It's been shown that nasal swabs and sputum samples have differing levels of accuracy. Looking further, there's at least 11 different methods available to test for the virus. Now, this table here comes from the same article in Nature Biotechnology. We don't know what tests are being used by labs at Thailand. We don't know what percentage of PUIs have actually undergone testing. Therefore, we have to consider the possibility that false negatives may be occurring. If you go back to my first video, you'll see that Thailand is an outlier for the number of detected cases relative to what's expected. Now, the second way we can interpret this data is that the data is unreliable. Um, this could be because many tests are pending, 
if the laboratory testing capacity is not enough, we could see a significant delay in test results. Or it could mean that due to methodological issues, we are receiving a higher than normal amount of false positives. There's skepticism where I'm at locally. Here at my university, Konkan University, two patients showed fever after returning from South Korea recently, and they reportedly were tested for the virus and came back negative. However, many people have expressed doubt in the certainty of the results based on the experiences in China and the testing issues that I've mentioned. So we don't know. This group that returned from South Korea will self-isolate for 14 days, which I think is a smart and cautious thing to do. I do hope, though, that the test results are correct, and in fact that Thailand has so far avoided community spreading of the virus. However, there's one more idea that's been rattling around in my head, and I was thinking about where the outbreaks were spreading quickly, you know, China, Japan, South Korea, Iran, and Italy. And I thought about where local community transmission has been more muted, places like Thailand, the Philippines, and if you believe it, also Cambodia and Indonesia. Even Singapore, which has seen a fairly high number of cases, uh, currently around 90, uh, those have mostly been cases directly linked to China and in one cluster at a church, presumably indoors. And I started thinking about climate and weather, and then I found this data to illustrate what I was thinking. This site, Nucleus Wealth, compared the number of cases in the winter climates uh, in the temperate zone of the Northern Hemisphere, uh, compared those to cases in the summer or equatorial climates such as Southeast Asia. You see that clearly there are fewer cases in the warmer climates. Now, I don't want to create a false sense of security because we should also consider that many co the countries in the yellow group have limited abilities for disease surveillance. But it's certainly a trend worth considering. Now, while we don't have any studies on the survival of SARS-CoV-2 virus in the environment, we can use surrogate viruses. What we see is that at lower temperatures and lower relative humidity, conditions that you would find in winter conditions, the surrogate viruses were able to persist on services for longer periods of time, and they have slower inactivation. Therefore, it is possible, and please view this with caution, but it is possible that the warmer temperatures and higher humidity may eliminate some modes of transmission of the virus or make it viable for shorter periods of time which perhaps has spared Thailand and other tropical countries from widespread community transmission. I'm hopeful this is true. Finally, let's quickly look at the economic impact. Yesterday, we saw global equities sell off with major indices around the world recording 3 to 4% drops. Locally in Thailand, the SET index dropped about 2.5%, and today it's down another 3 quarters of a percent. The Thai economy, which already faced significant headwinds now has to deal with a big drop in tourism, which makes up for a big portion of the economy. For the first 10 days of February, international tourist arrivals fell by 43% year over year, it was reported yesterday. If you live in Thailand, let me know what you're seeing. Post your comments below. If you're planning to travel to Thailand, post your questions as well. Please subscribe to my channel for future updates and check out other videos in this series. Thanks for watching and see you next time.